Hey warm, welcome back to the channel. Trying to push for 50,000 subscribers this year, so if you hit that button it would certainly mean a lot. The Airbus A350 and the Boeing 787 have emerged as leading contenders in the wide body market when we do factor in orders for aircraft. These two planes represent, yes, a new era for fuel efficiency, passenger comfort, and generally the technologies that are applied. As a result, they've equally attracted some pretty substantial interest in the 21st century. When airlines decide on the next era of their operations, you will often find the A350 and the 787 up for consideration. While the two aircraft types do not directly compete with each other in the long haul market, the capabilities of other wide bodies such as the 777X or the A330neo can either A be simply too significant or B just not favourable enough to order respectively. So let me explore the wonderful world of the A350 and the 787, where orders have reigned supreme for some time. The Airbus A350 and Boeing 787 were both introduced in the early 2000s, and while one would enter service earlier than the other for one plane maker, they both represented a pretty significant shift towards more fuel-efficient aircraft types. And this also had a roll-on effect for the overall environmental impact that was significant reduced. The two aircraft families, the two aircraft families also have several variants representing prospective customer opportunities. These variants are your A350-900, A350-1000 on the side of Boeing. We have the Dash 8, Dash 9 and Dash 10, which does allow airlines to leverage each plane's capabilities to their advantage and for deployment across various missions. Airlines will often put the A350 and 787 up for battle in a way because of their relatively modest size compared to other larger wide-body options like the 777X, A350 or the 7478. I am including two types, yes, that are no longer in production, but the point remains. Their sheer size means they are not adequate for most companies. So what does an airline do? It looks for a smaller aircraft. And no, the A350 and 787 technically aren't small, but in comparison to the 380 and 747, yes, they are. While these large planes can work for some companies, they won't work for all, and the reality is filling a 787 or A350 on flights across a network is also perceived as just generally more accessible, and if you are operating wide bodies, intend to, or generally have long-haul flights as part of your network, these two aforementioned types also come associated with far less risk. Additionally, these wide bodies provide greater flexibility for airlines to operate operate on various routes. This could be your long-haul intercontinental flights or shorter services where there is a substantial demand required on a daily basis. The A350 and the 787 are far more adaptable too than your much larger wide bodies, which allows customers to truly access their potential to the best of their abilities. Despite often considering what wide body they will order, customers will actually sometimes operate the A350 alongside the 787 and see many benefits and rewards from this. Qantas is usually my go-to example of how airlines will strategically look to incorporate these two planes. The Australian flag carrier will soon fly the A350-1000 on its flagship long-haul routes under Project Sunrise. It'll offer a blend of premium and economy operations too. It also extensively operates the Dreamliner, with the 7879 currently in service, proving essential to connecting locations in Europe to Australia non-stop as well as easing pressure on the A380s and previously utilised 747. The arrival of the A350s though will actually ease pressure on the 787s and the pair will eventually work in harmony long into the future. Each variant for Qantas serves a distinct purpose, catering to the specific route requirements and passenger needs. They are then deployed based on that and many other factors. Now, on the other hand, some airlines such as American and United have heavily favoured the Boeing 787 for their future wide-body operations instead. Both carriers have really embraced the Dreamliner, choosing it for not just its efficiency, but the range and the passenger appeal. Although United has technically A350 orders to its name, the airline has consistently deferred the type while only continuing to expand its commitment to the 787. 
a most recent order extension, came towards the back end of 2023. The variants offered in the 787 program provide United and other customers with a lot of flexibility to deploy the aircraft on diverse missions, whether that is using the high-capacity 787-10 on coast-to-coast flights within the United States, the 787-9 for your longer routes which connect cities in Australia and Asia. There is a lot of flexibility there and it is why it's a worthy investment for some companies. Boeing's potential introduction of a 787 high gross weight or HGW version certainly highlights the commitment to remaining competitive in the wide body market. It is also looking towards closing the gap between the 787 and the A350 that exists. Interestingly, it is worth mentioning that further development on an existing plane isn't actually abnormal. In fact, it is a pretty common occurrence. We've seen this time and time again, whether it be with the 757, 767, A350, or 777X. Boeing is aiming to offer customers a firm solution to wide-body needs and provide even further competition towards the A350. With the 787HGW, Boeing certainly enhances its appeal in providing airlines with additional reasons to opt for the Dreamliner or continue selecting it over the Airbus counterpart especially if they are already flying the 787. At the end of the day, any order that Boeing can snag away from Airbus is ultimately a massive positive, and they'll do anything in their power, within reason, of course, to do that. The A350 and 787 truly redefined what it meant to offer long-haul travel as a wide body, and they're definitely two industry leaders, with the aircraft also being loved by customers right around the world for different reasons. For a prospective airline looking to acquire either type, there are several advantages but equally proven there are opportunities to utilize both to benefit a network. Either way, you can pretty firmly say that the pair will continue dominating the scene for some time as customers enjoy the opportunities in the long-haul market. You can let me know your thoughts down below in the comments on the Boeing 787 and the Airbus A350 as industry leaders. I'd love to hear your take on the next decade. Do you believe the 787 and A350 will continue to be a leading force for all or will eventually we see that 777X move more into the picture? Will this only occur once certification is approved and the plane can fly with passengers? Let me know down below. Thank you very much for your support here on the channel. It truly does mean a lot. Take care, do also be safe, and I will indeed see you next time for more aviation analysis. And we'll fly.